Talktainment Radio Worldwide Sound. TalkTainmentRadio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or KE World Network, LLC. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, radio the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you, only confuse you, only confuse you. Okay, welcome back to... Part two of the Compensatory Concepts show with a Mr. Neely Fuller. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and if you would like to get in contact with the show, you can by calling 1-877-932-9766 or gmailing me at 7 com, and we will get to your uh, comments. Uh, we've been on um, justice, producing justice, and what is justice, and as you listen to part one, you have discovered uh, many things that Mr. Fuller has uh, described. Uh, this part two, I understand, I just spoke with the producer. Of course, this, this particular show now is going to be on podcast. Uh, it will air at uh, maybe eight or nine later on uh, this particular evening, but they're going to be two separate shows. So make sure you listen. And we, but we will get your call calls in, and you can be heard on the podcast. Uh, Mr. Fuller has been uh, with us, and uh, before we go to the phone lines, uh, we have a question from Lamont, Mr. Fuller, and he asks, um, Mr. Fuller, why do some black people always say pray to Jesus? Jesus will take care of it. And those people get mad when I say they're white Jesus. Looking at the picture on the wall didn't stop slavery. It was just refined. And he may nonstop what's going on now. Is that a correct assumption, or am I the one that is confused? Well, that's several questions there. If uh, someone's, if someone's, hello. Yeah, we're still here. If someone says to me about Jesus being white. I just simply say, well, I talk to white people, you know, all the time, and I seek information, so I have no problems with Jesus being white. I have problems with anybody, white or non-white, who is not giving me answers to questions. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, so now, if there's somebody that I am consulting called Jesus... And I say that I am dependent on that person to give me answers to whatever it is that the problem might be. I guess that that would be the reason for consulting someone named Jesus, and that is to get answers to questions. Then it comes down to what we talked about earlier in this program, and that is, okay, I consulted this person called Jesus. Now, somebody said that the person is white. Somebody else said, no, he was really black. Somebody said, well, he doesn't even exist, that somebody made it up. That's not the issue. The issue is, once I get the answer to my question, I called on. See, I'm not calling on somebody like calling an ambulance or anything else. Mm -hmm. I'm not calling on anybody except somebody who can help me. Now, if somebody says, well, Jesus will help me, so I call on Jesus. No problem there. Now, once I make that call, when you call someone, presumably you get an answer. And I've heard people say that they've gotten answers from Jesus. Now, it comes down to what we talked about earlier in the program. What do you do now that you've got your answer? Because you've got to do something now. I mean, you know, I mean, why did you call on someone? That someone is either going to do it for you, or you 
are going to receive a message saying something that you should do. Okay? Now, I've heard people say it both ways. No, Jesus takes care of everything. You don't have to do nothing. Now, I've heard some people say that. Yes. Well, okay. If then, then if it's not done, well, that was Jesus' will, you know? So that's the end of that story. Hmm. So it's not done. But now, if Jesus sends you a message, well, I got some, a few things for you to do. All right? So you just listen to whatever those few things are. And everybody, whether you called on Jesus or the mayor or the pope or whomever, your buddy down the street, all that you really look for is what was the result, because that's the logic. That's the logic. Yeah, I mean, if you get the result that you asked for, I mean, you know, then you know that you're on course. Mm-hmm. If you didn't get that result, then maybe it's one or two things happen. Maybe you asked for the incorrect thing, or you just wasn't supposed to get it. Hmm. Period. Period. See, I don't argue with people about, you know, or what Jesus said, or what John said, or what Nehemiah said, or what Solomon said, who was supposed to be the wisest person in the Old Testament. I mean, you know, I don't know what he said. Or, you know, you received the message. So I just look at whatever the result is of what you said that was your dilemma. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I look for the result. That's mm-hmm. all. I'm just looking for the result. Mm-hmm. I'm and, not going to argue about who you consulted. And then by by getting the result, you can come to your own conclusions. Thank you so much for the call uh, or for, or from the text. Uh, Mr. Fuller, let's go to the phone lines. Line number two. Uh, wait a minute. What is it? No, okay. Line number two. You are on with uh, Mr. Neely Fuller. What is your question? Good morning. Um, I was recently told by a person who classified themselves as white uh, that uh, they don't uh, like when I refer to certain white people as white supremacists or as suspected white supremacists. Mm-hmm. And they said that uh, that I was actually engaging in name calling and that they didn't want to be uh, called that particular name. They just wanted to be called by their name. So uh, my question is, when you use the term white supremacist, is that technically uh, engaging in name calling, or is that something else? Good question. question. Mr. Fuller? That's an excellent question. And the answer is no. I'm not calling the person. I'm telling the person what my mental condition is toward them. <laughs> my, see, that's a description of my mental condition. That's not a name that I'm putting on them. I'm saying, I suspect, sir, that you could be a racist. Yes, Why? sir. Because under codification, I'm required to. If you're a white person on this planet, in the system of white supremacy, I'm going to say that again. If you are classified as white, and you're on this planet now, walking around, in a system of white supremacy, I want to underline that, because that's the only system that's on the planet that's worth anything. If you're a white person in that system, and you are able, I want to underline able, to be a racist, Neely Fuller is duty-bound to suspect that you most likely are one until proven different. you got to suspect somebody because I don't have a master list of who is a racist and who is not. So it's just like in law enforcement. They say the person that committed the crime is wearing a blue shirt and is walking down Elm Street right now. So what does that law enforcement officer do? He doesn't have any proof that somebody in a blue shirt committed the crime. But when he walk, drives down that street and he sees three people in blue shirts, it could be either one of them. Okay? I mean, what else are you going to do? Somebody has to be a racist in a racist system. A racist system. We're always talking about white supremacy exists, racism exists. We're always being mistreated because of racism, but nobody can ever find a racist. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, that's that's not logical. It absolutely is. You've got to have a procedure, and that's the procedure. Hmm. I, I make no apologies for that. That is the procedure. Any white person who is able to be a racist could be one. Could be. You don't know until proven different. And it's incumbent upon the white person 
to say, not just in words, I'm not a racist. Many of them say that. But by their actions, their deeds, in all nine areas of activity. Look at the result of whatever yes, it is. Yes, look, at the, look mm-hmm. at the result of their performance. Mm-hmm. Just like going on a job. I can say that, hey, I'm a truck driver. Okay, I'm making that announcement, mm-hmm. but hey, get in the truck and let's see. Yes. If, <laughs> if the result of their performance is not consistent with what they claim they are, then you know. Then you have, you have doubts. You have doubts. <laughs> yeah, you might be, you just might be lied to, you which is what a racist be. will do right. in a minute. <laughs> All right. Thank you, my brother, for your call. We really appreciate it. And a very, very good question. Uh, we're, we were discussing, and we still are, about the um, report that came out back in 19, uh, 1967, what, 48 years ago, uh, the report was uh, the report of the National Advisory Commission on Civil Response, and Otto uh, Kerner was the uh, head, head, up, uh, head up the report. He was the governor for Illinois. And there were about, if I can do my math, there were about nine uh, white people, including a woman and two brothers that were on it. You can get the names of it when you go to the report. And they are the ones that came up with this report that Lyndon Johnson, quite frankly, was 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 not uh, very pleased with. But they told him this is what's going on. And one of the things that uh, that they they came up, I'm talking about the commission. They are the they in this case said that the major need is to generate new will, the will to tax ourselves to the extent necessary to meet the vital needs of the nation. He said the ma- they said that the major goal of the creation of a true union, a single society, and a single American identity, toward that goal, this is what they propose. We propose uh, the following objectives for our nation. Number one, opening up opportunities to those who are restricted by racial segregation, discrimination, and eliminating all barriers to to their choice of jobs, education and housing, removing the frustration of powerlessness among the disadvantaged by providing the means for them to deal with the problems that affect their own lives by increasing the capacity of our public and private institutions to respond to these problems, and then increasing communications across racial lines to destroy stereotypes, to halt polarization and end distrust and hostility and create common ground for efforts toward public order and social justice. You know what that means? Producing justice. Uh, that all men, I like the compensatory uh, definition, and Mr. Fuller, could you give the compensatory definition of justice? The compensatory definition for justice is in two parts. Guaranteeing, underline the word guaranteeing, Guaranteeing that no person is mistreated. Underline mistreated. Part two. Guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets, gets the it. most constructive help. Constructive help. Yeah, yeah. underline constructive. Because, see, somebody might come up to you today and say, hey, man, I, I got the shakes. I, I, I need some money right now. I'm going to tell you the truth. I need some money because I got to get a, me a heroin fix. Well, now, that person needs help, but heroin won't fix it, hmm. okay? No. So, hey, I, I, buddy, I mean, out of all due regard to you, I'm not going to give you no money to go and buy some more heroin because hmm. that's not going to solve a problem. The result is not going to be that the real problem is solved. It's not You're going to have a bigger problem. It's not constructive. Yeah, it's not constructive. No, no. one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six is the number. Or you can gmail me at sevenmrbobby.com. Uh, you're listening to the compensatory concept with Mr. Nearly Fuller. I'm your co host, Mr. Bobby, and it is heard exclusively on talkteamatradio.com, the world's greatest radio. Let's go to the phone lines and, uh, line number three. Okay, number three, you are on. What is your call for Mr., uh, question rather for Mr. Nearly Fuller? Hey, how you doing? Um, my question for Nearly Fuller is, um, do, um, a black, people uh, have to have an understanding of black history um, for them to uh, understand or conceive that they're in a system of racism, white supremacy. And right before you answer that question, I just want to give you a little context when it comes to uh, people. Uh, you have some people who are educated and they have a, uh, you know, they have their bachelor's degree and might have their master's degree um, in, uh, in another profession. Um, but 
they understand, they may take some African study classes and they understand racism superficially, meaning on a surface level. And then you have other uh, other black people who may have their master's or PhDs um, or no degree whatsoever, but they understand racism on a on a in depth level where they understand Marcus Garvey, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer, um, Francis Fanon, and but and then you have other black people who do not know Marcus Garvey. Francis Fanon, and you may see them on the street looting, okay? And I'm trying to say, isn't it, so shouldn't every black person know a little bit something about their black, about black history, or, or African history, or something about their history for them to even understand that they're in a system of racism, white supremacy? Because as soon as, as soon as any person says you're in a system of white supremacy to one of the people that's looting, it's like you're speaking a foreign language to them. Okay, so, so, so your question contained would be what to, Mr. Fuller? It would be, do, do black people have to have um, a, an understanding of black history for them, to under, for them to understand that they're in the system of racism, white supremacy okay. right now? Okay. Mr. Fuller? Yes, everybody, everybody on the planet should understand that we're in a system of white supremacy. This is why the looting is going on. This is why the black people are out in the streets. I mean, talking about, quote, unquote, police brutality. It's because the system of racism breeds this type of thing. This is a result of the system of white supremacy. Not just according to Neely Fuller, but going back to what we opened, opened this program about. The current commission report exhaustively said white racism, the cause of all of it, not some of it. All of it, A L L. This is all of it. Oh, okay, you wouldn't but, be having none of this uh, but if sir, it wasn't for racism. Uh, but sir, a, a lot of black people refuse to accept white people as their cause for has the cause for their problems. A lot of black people refuse to accept them uh, as the cause of their problem. So I'm saying those black people who refuse to accept white people or white supremacists has the cause for their problems are black people who don't have no history, no understanding of black history throughout throughout the time, throughout the 1900s. Like, at least you, you at least listen to Elijah Muhammad tapes once. But the black people who are looting, they don't have any understanding at all. Adam Clayton Powell, they never heard of that person in their life. The educational system that's integrated don't have, does not teach any of that whatsoever. So, I mean, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, Ask, don't they have to have some understanding of black of what happened to black people in the past? Yeah, some yeah. understanding. Okay. Yeah, yes, I, I will answer the question. You have to understand. You know, when you say past, the past is just one second ago. I mean, you know, uh, it depends on what it is you know about the past. And one thing that everybody should know is that if you have a the effects of racism dominating people's behavior all over this planet, then you must know what racism is. Otherwise, you are absolutely confused about everything. In fact, the statement in the front of the textbook for victims of white supremacy is as follows. If you do not understand white supremacy, what it is, yes, sir. and how it works, Everything else that you understand will confuse you. That's an absolute. So naturally, you'll have a whole bunch of people who are confused about everything. I'm, when I say everything, I mean everything. Everything about the stars and the moon and everything. Because the white supremacists talk about the stars and the moon. We wouldn't even know that the moon was the moon <laughs> if the white supremacists didn't tell us. And we wouldn't know that... If anybody had ever gone there, if directly or indirectly, the white supremacists didn't inform us of that. So what do we know? See, so you have to understand white supremacy if you're going to get an understanding about anything. Yes. You're not. You're going to be confused about everything, why you get up in the morning. I mean, what bus to catch. I mean, all of that. You might think that you're not confused, but when you're trying to catch the bus, you ask a question. Because all problems are solved by questions and answers. Question Why answers. am I trying to catch the bus? And where am I going? And what am I going to do when I get there? Because most likely you're trying to catch that bus because you're trying to get somewhere where the white supremacists 
want you to go in order to get something else that you need because they control everything, not some things, everything. And this is what all the people that you name came to an understanding about. That's why they were forming organizations like Adam Clayton Powell, I mean, preaching from his church and whatnot, about what? Racism, Marcus Garvey, going everywhere. I mean, trying to get a steamship line going. Why? Because of racism. Everything is about racism. It's nothing that's not dominated by the system of white supremacy. Yes, Absolutely sir. nothing. Nothing. Okay, you have another question before we go, caller? Um, um, Bobby, I don't know if Nilly Fuller really understands what I'm like. The question I'm trying to ask, I'm basically trying to say, everybody that fights for fights for justice or fight against the system of racism and white supremacy, they understood something that happened a hundred years ago, okay. two hundred years. They, okay. under, they had a little bit of context. But if you go to any of those people that you see looting, any um, urbanized area that has a large population of black people, after integration. The school systems, the sc- I go to schools in the 90s. The, they don't teach you uh, all the things that you learn okay. after you graduate Th- that's, high school. That's true. Now, so what would what are you trying to ask, Mr. Neely Fuller, then? Because you are correct. They, they don't teach that, but what are you, what do you want to ask him then? I'm trying to, I'm trying to ask him, how can, how can someone or an individual person understand that white supremacists are to blame for the are to blame because they control the resources. Okay. And are, how do how to explain that to them okay. when they when they don't understand anything about white domination? They okay. don't understand none of that. All right, Mr. Fuller. You can start by getting a textbook for victims of white supremacy. That's why I wrote it. I mean, if you just want a straightforward, straight from the shoulder, simple answer, because the first thing you see in that book is if you don't understand white supremacy. Everything else that you do understand will will confuse you. So uh, you know, that applies to everybody on the planet. The white okay. supremacists know exactly uh, what they are doing. Exactly. They're not confused. Exactly, my, my brother. They are the most. They are the least confused people on this planet. My brother, let me tell you something. Uh, when I first heard um, Nilly Fuller make that particular statement, and in conjunction with what you just said about not understanding. I did not understand what Mr. Neely Fuller was talking about. I, I really didn't. I, I, I was confused. But what I did was I kept on studying and researching amongst those people whom you uh, discovered or, or mentioned on the show and also other publications and other types of knowledge and began to ask questions which produced logic. It took me a while to get in contact with what Mr. Fuller was saying, and not because I'm the co-host, because I had a lot of questions just like you did. But you have to begin to ask questions as a start. To ask, this, as he's suggesting to you, ask a question, read this book, not just because he wrote this book, but because he's explaining the steps of and the causes of, of, of where you're at now, which according to the uh, Kerner Report, which I mentioned earlier, they concluded, and these were white people, they concluded that the problems that you're having are caused by white racism. That's what they said. And then I had to understand, well, what is it and how does it work? And remember, that's what he's saying. If you do, Mr. Fuller, could you repeat that? If you, if you do if not you understand. If you do not understand white supremacy, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you brother that's it right there i mean i can't we can't make you understand it but now, now he he said something about well they don't teach this in the schools yes. and all like that mm-hmm. i go right back to the statement <laughs> i mean hey it jumps right out at you if you don't understand white supremacy they're not teaching that about white supremacy in the schools so naturally you know, you only learn what you learn. So what are they teaching? See what I mean? So they might be teaching the glorification of white supremacy. You know, but what is a school? See, we get down to definitions now. The whole universe is a school. That's why they call what they call advanced learning universities. Hmm. They say, you know, now you've been to something called school, 
but actually school is wherever you happen to be. If you just open your eyes, and you can have school everywhere you go, because I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you what makes a school. What is a school? A school is when you ask a question and get an answer. I'm going to say that again. You know, people sometimes say, well, I didn't go to school. No, you're in school all the time. All the time. You're in school all the time. That's everybody on this planet. Everybody on this planet, including babies. Still learning. (laughs) Yes, Babies are in school all the time. They say, well, a baby hasn't started to school. Yes, that baby has. That baby starts learning the minute its brain starts working. Because what does that baby do? The baby asks questions even before it learns to talk. Yes. That baby is asking questions when it screams out in the middle of the night. Where is everybody? That's what that baby is doing when it's yelling in the dark. And you got to get up and tend to that baby. Mm-hmm. You might laugh at this, if this is really what's going on. That baby's sending a message. Hey, somebody come and tend to me. I don't know what's going on. I can't figure stuff out. I'm asking questions. I mean, I want somebody to come here right now. Mm-hmm. I don't want them to wait for nothing. Everybody who has a baby understands that, or who has had one. Or you might not understand it when you were a baby, but you were doing it. Mm-hmm. You were crying out. The okay. minute they slap breath in your body, you say, what's going on here? That's what that cry is all about. My brother, uh, I hope that uh, we were able to, and Mr. Fuller was able to give you at least some direction as to, uh, in, in answering your specific question. Uh, were, was that okay with you? Y- y- yes, thank you. Okay? And the la- and one l- last part is, don't in the system of white supremacy, don't they teach non-white people not to value reading? So that's why when you say give them the book, I, I would do I would do that. Why give them the book? They see I'm not gonna. I'm being brutally honest. I'm being brutally honest. As as a, you're not a black person that's that's about trying to go to college or anything. You know I mean, they don't well, like to read. They don't like to read. Well, you're always. I'm gonna say again. You're always in college. You're in the universe. And, I get, I, and we, I get, therefore, I, we got to be universal men and universal women. And what's the procedure for that? See, it all comes down to procedure. When you talk about school, you're just talking about a procedure. A procedure of doing what? Of asking questions and getting answers. That's all you need to do, as long as you're breathing. Just keep doing what you were doing when you were first born. Ask questions and getting answers to those questions, even if the answers are, I don't know. But some, people don't, of those. some people don't like to ask any questions. That's what I'm, like some there are black people out there who don't like to ask any questions and who do not like to read. All right, that there's a, there's then a, you then you tell them the procedure for okay okay do, okay for solving any problem that they have because every problem may not every black person may not want to read and every black person may not want to ask questions. Right. But you can tell them if they have a problem. The only way they're going to solve that problem, they're going to have to ask somebody right. something. There's only there's, oh, okay. o- there's only so much you can do, my brother. You cannot make them do that, but you can present the information with references to have them to, to back up your statement toward them. And then it would be incumbent upon them to take the initiative to work that thing out. Okay, okay. That, that makes sense. Thank okay. you. Thank you. you thank you're you. welcome. And thank you so much for your call. Okay, Dr. Full. I mean, Mr. Fully, it's a... <laughs> These are pretty good questions, and that, and I'm very happy that you um, turned me on to that document, uh, the document being the Kerner Report, and I suggest those who are listening uh, minimize it and go look at that re- Kerner Report and find out what's been going on. It's been go- happening for 48 years and what was done. Okay, coming up next, more of your calls, more of your Gmails, all this and much more on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the compensatory concept the world's greatest radio, radio the way it should be heard.
TalkTainmentRadio.com is the premier internet radio platform offering 40 plus talk radio style programs professionally produced, optimized for online distribution, featuring Columbus, Ohio on air personalities. TalkTainmentRadio.com offers listeners diverse programming options covering topics such as arts and culture, love, life and relationships, technology, religion, paranormal activities, local and national politics, women's issues, alongside health and wellness. Listeners can access their favorite TalkTainmentRadio.com programs free of cost through the website. Download the TTR app to your cell phone and you can take us wherever you go. We have programs on demand to fit your schedule through our podcast. The address is TalkTainmentRadio.com. Goodwill is a global social services enterprise and the leading nonprofit provider of job training programs and career services in the United States and Canada. To pay for its program, Goodwill sells donated clothes and other household items in more than 2,700 stores and online at shopgoodwill.com. Goodwill uses the revenue earned from these sales to fund job training, employment placement services, and other community programs. The goal of the campaign is to increase goods donations to Goodwill, inspire an emotional connection to the Goodwill brand, and to elevate preference for Goodwill will we can give you a new heart we can help you walk again we can perform brain surgery we can treat a sore throat we can bring life into the world we can work so many miracles but the one thing we cannot do is read your mind when you communicate with your doctor when you ask us more questions you reduce your risk of suffering a medical mistake tens of thousands of lives are lost every year due to medical mistakes the healthcare community is working on it but you can help. Please, open up. Ask more questions. What are the side effects? When should I expect my test results? Will this medication interact with my other prescriptions? We can't answer if you don't ask. Help reduce your risk. Questions are the answer. Learn the 10 questions you must ask. Visit www.ahrq.gov. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, and the... Supporting Minority Education. I'm Sean Booker, damn it, from The Melting Pot. I'm here to tell you that as the mother of a high school senior, I know due to financial circumstances, many of America's deserving minority students do not have access to a college education. Since 1944, the United Negro College Fund has sought to provide one. Since 1972, the beginning of this campaign, UNCF has helped more than 300,000 talented students earn a college degree. I'm Sean Booker, damn it, give a helping hand. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him opening his own clothing store at the age of 18? One in 138,000. Excited to be a part of pop culture, he packed for the big city. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. I encourage you to learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks, the Ad Council, and TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. The United Independent Compensatory Code System concept by Neely Fuller is considered as one of the substantial and basic books for understanding and effectively countering racism. Neely Fuller will turn upside down everything you've heard and everything you think you know about racism and how it works. Call area code 202-484-5461. 202-484-5461. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Go ahead. Make my day. You got the power. All right. Welcome back to the second slice of the action of the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I'm Mr. Bobby. And this is uh, Talk Team and Radio, radio the way it should be heard. If you'd like to get in contact with the show, and the phone lines are busy, so you have to be patient, 
But you can by calling 1-877-932-9766, or you can Gmail me at 7 Bobby at gmail.com. We did our first uh, hour at our regular time at um, uh, 10 to 11, and that was heard live. This particular show is part two. is in podcast, but you can um, uh, get it. Uh, Ed just told me it will, it will air at 10 o'clock the same day. Uh, so you can get the show and hear what uh, Mr. Fuller has to say. We're speaking about producing uh, justice, the results in particular, our information. Some of it is based on a, a report by the Kerner Commission. Um, they, Lyndon Johnson, uh, the, the former president of the United States, States issued uh, uh, commissioned a commission to report on uh, why they were having outbreaks of, of violence and so forth in uh, major American cities in 1967. Uh, the report of the National Advisory Commission on Civil Disorders. And he did not like what he got, what he heard. And these were nine white people and men and two uh, brothers uh, who were on the uh, committee, and they just told him, period, that the reason why we have all this outbreak in violence, this is what they said, is because of white supremacy. And Lyndon Johnson did not like that. Of course, Neely Fuller has written a book called The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of white supremacy, and then he has written an additional word guide, like a dictionary, to help you understand the different codes. And you can get that through by going to ProduceJustice.com. That's ProduceJustice.com, and Mr. Fuller has set up um, the uh, avenue that you may purchase the book, and it is my strong recommendation and not because he has asked me, he, is, he, he has not asked me to do anything to promote his book, but I strongly suggest if you are serious about your consciousness and want to know what racism is and how it works, then you need, you need to get this book. Because if you don't get this, then everything that you, what is that, Mr. Forley, that you think will only do what? Well, it might confuse you. Yes. Now, I don't say that, you know, that after you read the book, there are some people who read the book and said that they didn't get anything out of it. Yes. But the, uh, uh, it's been my experience that almost everybody, that mo for the most part, uh, said that they got quite a bit out of it. Some people said they got a lot out of it. Some people said they got a few things out of it. Uh, no, there are no experts on white supremacy except the white supremacists themselves. Now, it doesn't make any difference what school you go to and all like that. You may be learning a lot about sociology and psychology and this, that, and the other, but the white supremacists are the only experts on this planet on what they do because they're the only ones who have been in business long enough and have the skills to keep doing what they're doing with everybody else running, trying to figure out yes. how they do what they do. Here is the... See, so it's, a, it's an ongoing process of trying to figure out how they manipulate everything that their victims, non-white people, black, brown, red, yellow, mm -hmm. all over the world, do every minute of every the day. day. Okay. And we are, we are running always out of breath behind them, trying to figure out how they manipulate us. <laughs> Here's the quote from 40, in every area of activity. Here's the quote from 44 years ago by Neely Fuller. Said, "Quote: If you do not understand white supremacy, racism, what it is, and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you." Mr. Fuller wrote that in 1971. Let's go to the phone lines. Uh, caller, you're on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., line number one. Okay, go ahead. You are on. What is your question? Question is, why do we say the black church when our black people and our black preachers of the black church practice the white supremacy religion? Okay, Mr. Fuller. My question, and you all have a nice day. All righty. Mr. Fuller? Oh, well, I can't comment on what that black preachers are doing when they practice uh, uh, a white religion. Uh, 
we all support the white religion. When I say we, I mean everybody who's non-white, because we are in the system of white supremacy. White supremacy is the strongest religion that the world has ever seen. There's no religion. What is a religion? A religion is a strong belief backed up by action. Now, the white supremacists believe in white supremacy, so that takes care of that belief part. I mean, when when a white supremacist says, I believe in white supremacy, they're not just kidding around. Many people claim that they have a religion, but when it comes to actually practicing everything that their religion requires, many people don't quite measure up, sometimes by their own admission. They'll just simply say that I'm trying to be a Christian. I'm trying to be a Muslim. I'm trying to be a Jew. I'm trying to be a practicing Hindu, on and on and on. Well, if you're trying to be something like a truck driver or an airplane pilot, that's not the same as being one. See, so trying is not the same as being So when you look around for people who are actually acting in concert with every part of their religion, every minute of every day, without missing a beat and without making a mistake, it's only the white supremacists that do that. Mm. So there is a thing called the religion of white supremacy, and it is the strongest, most powerful religion that the world has ever seen. All of the so-called religions are also rants. They don't hold a smidgen up against the religion of white supremacy. And the white supremacists prove it by they'll go around and check everybody else's religion. And if there's anything in that religion, I don't care what religion it is, Confucianism or whatever, if it's incompatible with the religion of white supremacy, you better believe if you are a follower of that religion, the white supremacists are going to knock on your door, so to speak, Mm -hmm. and say, you are not going to practice this part of this religion because it's bad for my business, which is the religion of white supremacy. Now, you can practice your religion and burn all the incense and whatnot and, and beat on your drums or whatnot and sing your songs and clap your hands. You can do all of that. But it better conform with not hurting my business of white supremacy. If you think your religion is going to get in my face as a practitioner of the religion of white supremacy, which means mistreating people based on color, you're going to find out who your real God is. (laughs) And I will show you in about five minutes. (laughs) It won't take a long time. (laughs) All righty. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fuller, and thank you, caller. Okay, let's go to line number, uh, what is that, Galen, line number two? Line number two, you are on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Hi, Mr. Fuller. This is Carl. I'm calling from Montreal, Canada. I'm the one who's producing the the cartoons. Uh, I just want to know if uh, uh, what I'm doing is is, is, uh, constructive, you know, to promoting your books, to make the people know that um, you're out there especially here in Canada. A lot of people don't know about you. So uh, as an artist, uh, I think it was something constructive uh, by uh, creating cartoons. Uh, and uh, I'm doing this to, to, you know, to promote your books, actually, you know. So, But at the same time, I have to have your authorization. So I was wondering if it's constructive by, uh, you know, to reach a younger, gener- you know, a, young, a younger audience. Sorry for it. But, uh, I mean, very because my English is not that good because I'm the uh, I'm from the French part of the, the city of Montreal. I hope you understand. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Try to be clear. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. You know, I, I do cartoons and Nelly Fuller had a great um, way to uh, I mean to create images. You know, so as an artist, it's easy for me to <laughs> to make the cartoons, and a lot of people send me o- audio so I can do it. Because they um, they enjoy it, and me too. I have fun by doing this, and for me, I think it was constructive. And I have a website it's called uh, HipHopCartoons.ca, and there's a sec- uh, a section, you know, where you can 
order the book from producedjustice.com. So in every cartoon and uh, I'm doing, I put that link and okay. also in the video so people can and go buy the book because okay. that's the main concern. Okay, let's let Mr. Fuller respond to that. Mr. Fuller? Right. Well, see, I don't know because, I, uh, you know, there's so lots of people doing things. Now, the only thing that I'm concerned about is that th the work that I'm doing is taken out of context. I mentioned that basically in my word guide. Now, in the updated version of the book that I'm working on, or the basic book, I'll also have it in there. Context is very important. Also, anything that I say, I want it to be very specific and within context uh, of what it is that the overall work that I'm doing is, mm -hmm. and not to be distorted or confused. Okay. See, the key word um, here is I can't, I cannot embellish confusion where yeah. somebody puts a spin on what I'm trying to say where it comes out to be something else because the um, white supremacists are looking for that. And the white supremacists yeah. are also out there doing things. Uh, um, under the guise of uh, this is all a part of Neely Fuller's plan and his work mm -hmm. and what he advocates, when it may not be that at all. And you better believe if it's something exactly. the white supremacists are doing, it's something that I'm not in line with at all. Yeah. Uh, but hang, they know how to skillfully do right. this. Ha so, hang on, Mr. Fuller. You're listening to the Compensatory Concept right. with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com. Radio the way it should be heard. You can call us by calling 1-877-932-9766, or you can Gmail me by uh, uh, getting uh, 7 Bobby at gmail.com, and I will try to read that. Okay, Mr. Fuller, go ahead with your response. I'm sorry I had to get that station ID in. So for the most part, in an official manner, I just simply say, what Neely Fuller says on talk tainment and whatnot, I mean, that's usually in a straight line. Now, sometimes even on talk tainment, I might make mistakes, but I will, I will say that, hey, on that last program, I made a mistake. I had my facts incorrect and something like that. See, so I if I get a chance to do that. But basically, I want the books to do the talking for me. What exactly. I write, that is, that yeah. is, that's the epicenter of what I'm about. Okay. I mean, because... Well, the thing is, it's easy for me to, 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 I mean, to draw because uh, I don't take all the, uh, I mean, the context. I mean, I don't take all the audio. I only take parts when you... The funny way, the way you imitate the white people, <laughs> the white supremacists, it's funny to me because my head, like, you know, my brain computer, like Mr. Mr. Weldon said, keeps rolling. Like I'm like, it's not really um, out of context. It's just... The way you, you, you make the images is so raw, so I, I don't know. You know, my, my artist side, you know, I can just draw it and, and do the cartoon. So if you have a chance to see them, you'll see it's not really out of context. It's, it's, and I had, like, one of my first, I did, it was the, you know, what the white supremacists are doing uh, right now. I heard this one, and I had, like, about 30, 35,000 people watch, uh, I mean, on YouTube uh, watching it and keep demanding and keep asking, do more, do more. And I see if you have a chance to go see it, a lot of people are, they didn't know about you and they get to know you and they get to ask me where they can get the book. And I, you know, I try to promote you at the same time. But I, I, I'm saying, I realized that uh, it was constructive, you know, because I was listening to the podcast sometimes and I heard you don't make, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say you don't make that much money, but people said, uh, you know, you, you're supposed to be prosperous with this, you know, make a lot of money. So as an artist, I said, man, I'm going to use my talent to, you know, to, to uplift or to, to try to, you know, to bring something on the table. That's what I was thinking in my heart, you know, so just try to help and sort of promote the book. But I try to get everything out of context. So that's why I choose only parts of the conversation when you only imitating the white supremacists. And so I, I like for people, I'd like to interject this, I'd like for people to identify you know, who's saying what. I say that in the book <laughs> itself. I call it, in the in the, uh, the word guide, I call it stand by your work. That's, that's so right. that I did one. That's so that everybody is, knows who is saying what. Because that's, that's one right. thing that the white supremacists do worldwide. They know how to say things and make it look like somebody else said it, or they know how to say things that somebody else said and make it look like they said it. And they manipulate people all the time, all over the world, and it causes all kinds of what? 
confusion. Confusion. See, so, but if everybody stands by whatever he or she is doing, it makes it very clear. Now, you know, I, I quote Mark Twain, but when I quote Mark Twain, I don't say this is Neely Fuller's words. These are Mark Twain's words that he wanted out here. So I'm just repeating what Mark Twain said and with his yeah. intention uh, also yeah. of why he said it. Because he said why he was saying it. Mm-hmm. So I'm just repeating it. So, But I will put Mark Twain's name on it. I don't say yeah, this is the same that. time. That's the same thing I'm doing. Uh, yes. That, you watch well, that's, all, that's mm-hmm. all that's required. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not raising sand about that. I'm not opposed <laughs> to that. Just as long as okay. you have focus and clarity and truth. See, the key word yeah. in everything in counter-racist science is you've got to have truth. The one reason right. we have this riots over there in Baltimore is because we haven't had enough truth telling. Right, right. That's right. Okay, That's Carl. Well, did, Carl, did that answer your question? Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Very, very much. Okay, and Carl. Thank you. Well, okay, well, and uh, thank you very much for receiving me. Yes. And, uh, have a blessed day. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Very I'll call. Much. I'll, I'll call back. Yes, you, you can do that. And if you have a chance to watch the cartoons, you know, so let me know if you're in contact or not, because for me, I think it's constructive. You know, a lot okay. of people writing me. Okay, I, I, I understand okay. what you're saying. All right. right. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. All righty. Well, we got that cleared up, and I hope anybody else that's trying to do that at least have an opportunity to call in and speak with Mr. Fuller about that. Remember, truth, that's in essence. Uh, from the Gmail, we got a question from Rodney Frazier. He said this, Mr. Fuller, my question is, how do I as a non-white brown male overcome my faults from the court system into a constructive life when finding labor? Oh, you do the best you can according to what the white supremacists allow you to do uh, because they hold it against you. These are laws that they have. But you, you have to have what they call capital. In most places of the world, they say that everybody should be a capitalist. And what do they mean by that? Uh, so in asking all the questions that I could ask down through the years, I came to the conclusion with the answers that I was getting, most of them very contradictory, that capital just means you have something. You have something rather than nothing. That's what capital is, mm-hmm. That the things that you need. That's what they call capital. So you just simply ask. When you get out of prison or something like that, if if that's what he's alluding to, is that what he is alluding yes, to? That he, he was in prison. Yeah, he was. He was. He in was in greater kind of, confinement. Uh, that's confinement. What the code, mm-hmm. Yeah, the code calls it greater confinement because greater we confinement. all we are all in prison, mm-hmm. but he was in greater confinement, which means the walls were closer closer in. Yes, sir. Okay, so what he does say, okay, you let me go. You said, quote unquote, you can go now. So the question is, all. Oh, Problems are solved through the process of questions and answers. And answers, yes. Go where and do what, sir, ma'am. Otherwise, I'm going to stand right here next to you until you tell me, because I don't know where to go. I'm afraid to go anywhere that you don't want me to be, and I'm afraid to do anything that you don't want me to do. So go where and do what. And this is the way you approach every person who is classified as white on this planet. You want me to do what? You want me to go where and do what? When? How? You know, and they might say, well, get a job. Okay. Get a job where? When? You know, and just keep asking questions because there's nothing else you can do. Just ask questions. What do you want me to do? Even if you wind up sitting on the steps of the law enforcement officers. If they keep sending you somewhere, go out and get a job, but don't go on the streets and beg, Mm -hmm. because we will arrest you. Well, I don't want to get arrested again, so what do I do? Well, we don't know what for you to do. Right. Okay, well, suppose I just sit here until I get some answers. Well, if you sit here on the police headquarters steps, you're going to get arrested for doing that, because you're trespassing, because we have let you go. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, we don't know what to tell you. Well, Mm -hmm. do you know anybody who does? See, just keep asking questions. And the reason I'm saying this, it might sound simplistic, 
That's exactly what I would do. Yes. If I was in your condition. Because what else could I do? What else could you do? And see, that makes sense. That's logical. And see, that's one of the things that the Kerner report indicated. And Lyndon Johnson was furious with that when he, when they told them that the, these, this program, these programs were designed to, con, to confine black men, the, the, the penal system, the, the police, they were deliberately designed to cause a certain type of result so that they could go in with impunity and arrest people for whatever reason that they wanted to at any time they wanted to and not, not too much resistance. They, they said that and Johnson was furious. But the commission was, you know, he wanted truth, and and that's what he that's what he gave them, that's what he gave them. Uh, I have a ooh, wait a minute, let me see. I have a um, comment from uh, Derek Jacquet from Saturday. He said, uh, "Mr. Fuller, this was my first time uh, listening to the show. I want to say kudos to you. Uh, you're doing great work, and and thank you uh, for putting the the information out there." And um, and for all the wonderful things that you do. Okay, well, Derek, <laughs> thank you. Uh, this is a question from Miss Dorsey. She says this, Peace, my name is this, and my question for Mr. Fuller is, what are some of the ways to practice countering racism? What do I do with idle time to counter racism? Oh, it's not supposed to be any such uh, thing as idle time. You're supposed to be trying to think, speak, and act to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice all the time. And the way you do that is in everything that you do. You ask yourself, you know, there's no such thing as idle time. If you're looking at television, you're supposed to be studying. I mean, even if you're looking at an old movie or a new movie, try to find out. What is in that that might be of constructive value? If, are there any lessons in it? And if you can't pick up any lessons, then turn the channel. You know, because it's supposed to be lessons that you learn from everything. You're always in a learning mode. Why? Because when you're in a learning mode, you're getting questions answered. And the solution to all problems is a matter of questions and answers. You're supposed to be in a questioning mode all the time. How do you do this? How do you do that? What's the best way to go about doing this? Because there's always a best way of doing everything. And there's always a worse way. It's always a best way of saying everything. And it's always a worse way. Try to, by the process of questions and answers, find out the best way to go about doing anything. An old sergeant, when I was in the military once, uh, said, Fuller, there is a best way even to pick up a pencil off of a desk. It might be three ways to pick up that pencil. Figure out the best way before you pick it up. And then pick it up and get that way about every move that you make. The best way to go about doing everything, no matter how small it is or how large it is. I mean, if you're going to take part in a demonstration, what's the best way to take part in a street demonstration? Mm -hmm. There's a best way, and there's a worse way, like throwing a bottle of gasoline into a drugstore. Is that the best way to demonstrate a message because you're sending a message? No. The record has shown that's not the best way. Oh, no. (laughs) Particularly when you work in that drugstore. (laughs) <laughs> right, which 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 is which I don't understand uh, during the uh, riots, uh, whatever there was, the civil disturbance in Baltimore, when you messed up a CVS store where where you work at, and now you're unemployed. Yes, it's crazy, crazy. Well, Mister Fuller, we've done two hours, and it doesn't seem like it seems like we can do more. But first of all, I'd like to thank you, you know, for your time. And listeners, I'd like to thank you for putting up with us. And if we've made mistakes, we'll try to do better the next time. This is TalkTeamingRadio.com, the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., co-host Mr. Bobby. TalkTeamingRadio.com, the world's greatest radio and radio the way it should be heard. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. 
Thanks for listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. The most important question in all racial matters is why one should always ask it. Radio, the way it should be heard. You've got the power. The world's greatest radio. TalkTainmentRadio.com.